Hello, and thanks for your interest in this video. This video is a recording of the introduction to the High Jump 101 eCourse presented by High Jump Help. We are offering it because we think it provides valuable information for high jump athletes and coaches. This is the introduction to the larger High Jump 101 eCourse offered. You can visit highjumphelp.com for more information. You can find the link in the description below. Enjoy the free introduction to the High Jump 101 eCourse. Hello and welcome to High Jump 101, um, the High Jump Baby Steps. So the goal of this training is to be a step-by-step -step guide to coaching the high jump. Um, so uh, maybe you are a new high jump coach or um, uh, just a new coach to track and field altogether. The goal of this presentation is to provide value, educational resources, and knowledge so that you can coach um, your athletes and so that they can reach their potential in the high jump. Um, so here's the course agenda. So we're going to go over a brief introduction, um, introduce high jump help a little bit, and then we're going to be talking about high jump baby steps, a very general overview of what they are, and then we, can t we will talk briefly about the top five mistakes coaches make in the high jump. So an introduction, who we are. So High Jump Help was founded by myself. My name is Corey White. Um, I have 13 years of experience in the high jump. Um, during my career, I really discovered that at the collegiate level, the high jumpers that were coming in to the program, which were elite high jumpers in high school, um, they had been focusing on you know, the least important parts of the high jump. Um, and, their high, and their high jump coaches were also focusing on those least important parts of the high jump. And it led to me having to break a lot of bad, issue, bad habits. Um, so really our mission is to provide you know, proven high jump resources to coaches so that um, you know, the coach doesn't need to feel uh, this guilt or this fear that they're going to mess up their athletes or um, something along those lines. Um, something that really um, hit me was I was at a high school meet that happened to be at um, the facility where I coach at and a high jump coach from the local high school came up to me and was like desperate. She was like, I have this new high jump, I have this high jumper, I'm new to coaching, uh, she went to state last year, I just don't want to mess her up. Uh, so her fear was that she was going to mess up this already um, good high jumper that had already gone to state and done very well. So her fear was that you know she would tell her something wrong that would mess her up and you know not get her to state. So um, you know I showed her very basic things to help her out, um, and she was just super appreciative. So it made me wonder. I was like, okay, so these high jumpers that I'm getting, you know. They've been focusing on the wrong things their entire careers, um, which means their high jump coaches were, if they even had any, sometimes they didn't have any. Um, and then high jump coaches are also coming up to me asking me for advice um, on how to coach the high jump. So um, to me, right, high jump is very simple. Um, and I hope that through these resources, you'll find out how simple it really is. But um, it can be daunting, right? And if you don't know where to start, and if you're focusing on the wrong things, then um, you know it's a recipe for disaster, and it can lead to a lot of coaches not wanting to even coach the event, right? Um, so really, the goal of this training is to teach coaches how to properly coach and provide um, proven, concise, and easy to follow guidelines, so uh, a coach can successfully coach a high jump event and coach an athlete. Um, so I just want to go over quick what should be in your coach's toolbox. Um, so there's some very obvious things that most people know about. So you have your mat, your standards, and your bar, right? That's very basic for any high jump um, event or practice. Uh, another thing I would recommend having is a bungee. So what that is, is a, it's a substitute for a bar. hurts less than a bar, and it's good for training. Um, it's a lot easier on coaches, too, because the athlete hits a bar, um, you know, you have to put it back up all the time. With the bungee, it's not a big deal. Another very, very important piece is a tape measure. So you need to be able to measure 
the approach of your athlete. And um, in this training, we will stress the importance of having an approach measured out. Chalk and tape, again, used to mark the approach. And then spikes. So the spikes would be for the athletes to be worn during the high jump. Um, any sort of spikes work starting out um, as long as you have some sort of spikes. If you're using just regular shoes, if it gets a little wet out, uh, the athlete's foot can slip and we don't want that. So any sort of spikes work um, as they become more advanced and bring in more speed, they're going to want um, full on high jump spikes with the heel with the heel spikes in them. A couple other tools to consider um, in the high jump is number one, a tablet device or a camera of some sort. So the ability to record a jump instantly and see exactly what's going on with one of your athlete's approaches or jumps or knee drives or anything like that is a huge benefit, right? You know, think about even 10 years ago, like that, that wouldn't have even been an option. So now um, it's at your fingertips, so utilize it. but there's a warning. <laughs> Athletes can spend too much time criticizing their jumps and it actually makes them lose confidence. So allow them to see their jumps sparingly. As a coach, you can look at their jumps more often, but make sure that they're not nitpicking their jumps apart. Number two, sun protection. Uh, so if you're new to track and field, um, the events are, the meets are very, very long and the high jump event itself is very long takes several hours to conclude plus if you're doing both men and women it takes even longer so uh, you're out in the sun for a long time so very much recommend having sunglasses a hat sunscreen or even an umbrella and again this goes for athletes as well so uh, make sure your athletes are staying out of the sun you know they're drinking water um, and they have their sunscreen on so you know they can continue to compete the next day and they're not completely miserable Number three is a sense of humor. So high jump events are very long and track and field in general, um, you know, you're pushing your athletes to their body's limits most days, um, whether it be jumping or running. So if it's not fun, athletes aren't going to stick around. Um, most athletes aren't going to stick around. So having a sense of humor to, um, you know, laugh with your athletes and not only your athletes, but the other team's athletes, the other team's coaches, um, you're going to be around each other a lot. So you might as well have a good time doing it. Um, and if you don't do this, then you're going to find out that not only the athletes aren't going to want to do it, you're not going to want to do it either. Next, we're going to go over the four baby steps of high jump. This is going to be a very general overview. Um, so um, if you are doing this as part of the free trial, um, this is going to be the most we're going to go into the high jump baby steps. Um, so if you want more information on the high jump baby steps, um, us going in into in depth on the baby steps, um, providing video analysis on each of the baby steps and providing drills and what good looks like of each baby step, then you're going to want to purchase the full program. Um, but this would be a good spot for you to start and even just this general overview will help provide great value uh, for your track and field team. So the four baby steps are number one, the approach, number two, the takeoff, number three, the knee drive, and number four is the overbar mechanics, also known as the back bend. So why did we create the baby steps? Um, the baby steps are here because they're a concise and easy example of how um, a coach should teach their athletes the high jump, okay? And this prevents athletes from developing bad habits that will need to be broken on later in their career if they don't follow these steps. So these steps are meant to be done in order because without a proper approach, the athlete's foot placement and takeoff will be incorrect which then leads to a poor knee drive, which is the key to proper rotation around the bar, which is key for a back bend. Um, so these are meant to be done in order. They all build off of each other. If you do number one wrong, the approach, if you do that wrong, it's gonna lead to issues in the takeoff knee drive and over bar mechanics, okay? If you do number one and two correct, um, you know, a lot of times that will lead to a good number three, but not all the time, right? And if number three is wrong, number four 
over bar mechanics is going to be wrong. Okay, so they build off of each other. That's why they're important, and it leads to good habits for your athletes and not bad habits. Um, so I just want to go over quick about the top five mistakes um, I see coaches making at the high school level and also at the collegiate level. Um, so the first one is the athlete does not have a measured out approach. Um, this is so simple and it, the easiest way to have your athlete have a leg up on the competition. Okay, Get it measured out and record it. Easy enough. Uh, number two. Coaches are focusing on the overbar mechanics or backbend way too much. Okay, as you saw in the baby steps before, the backbend is the last baby step, and that's for good reason. It's the one that should really be focused on the least. If you're doing the other three baby steps correctly, the backbend happens naturally because the high jumper's body is in the correct position. Okay, so really we need to focus on the backbend very, very little and focus on the approach. The takeoff and the knee drive much more. Number three is they do not have their ath their high jump athletes run. Okay, so um, believe it or not, but speed is important even in the high jump. Athletes who run are in, tend to be in better shape, are more explosive, and most importantly, they can handle more speed in their high jump approach. So in reality, greater speed equals higher jumping. Um, and just because an athlete is fast doesn't necessarily mean they can convert that speed um, to vertical jump. Okay, so that's where running also helps with that transition. It helps them build the correct muscles so they can convert that horizontal energy that they create from their approach into vertical energy so they can actually clear a bar. Number four, um, they tell their athletes too many things to work on. So during practice or during events, um, you know, they're telling their athletes, well, okay, you did your back bend wrong and your approach is all wrong. So they try to have their athletes focus on, you know, two or three different things during each jump. Um, that's just not a good practice because most people can only focus on one thing at a time. You know, multitasking really is a myth. So um, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're letting our athletes know one thing at a time to work on. Okay, and what we suggest at High Jump Help is to follow the High Jump Baby Steps. So working through each one of the High Jump Baby Steps um, during practice and during an event, one at a time. So if the athlete is doing a great job at their approach and their approach is on, but um, they are doing a poor job of their knee drive, which is leading them to snap on the bar, okay, we don't want to tell them, hey, you need to drive your knee better and you can't snap. No, we don't want to do that. What we want to say is, hey, everything looks great. All we need to work on is holding that knee a little bit longer, okay? And if they do that, and the knee drive looks great on the next jump, but their uh, back bend still looks poor, then the next jump, what we're going to say is, hey, everything looks great. Um, you just need to hold that bend a little bit longer kind of thing, okay? So one thing at a time, work through those baby steps, start with the approach, work on the takeoff, then go to the knee drive, and then finally the overbar mechanics or the back bend. Number five, we do not consider the mental aspects of the sport. Okay, so there's a huge piece, um, a huge mental piece to high jump that coaches forget about. Um, we forget that this sport requires athletes to use 100% of their physical ability day in and day out. Okay, so. Um, we're pushing our athletes' bodies to new levels, and if they're not all there mentally, then um, we can't expect them to be all there physically. Okay, so um, now also imagine you as a coach, you tell your athletes that they're worthless every day, that they're not good enough every day. How do you think they're going to perform? Probably not very good, right? Well, that's what they're telling themselves in their heads every single day. Okay, so encourage positive self-talk, encourage positive self-imagery, encourage just positive imagery in the high jump, so them imagining them making the next bar. Um, this positive self-talk and positive imagery isn't just going to help them in high jump, but it's also going to help them in life in general, and I think that's what coaches are made for. 
Thank you for trying the free introduction to High Jump 101. Um, I encourage you to go in and um, purchase the full uh, course. Um, I think there's a lot of good, valuable material in there that will really help your um, high jump athletes, you as a coach, and your um, track team in general. Um, so the rest of the course is going to um, into depth in each of the high jump baby steps, and they provide um, tips, tricks, pro tips, um, video analyses, uh, video analyses of what good looks like, and also drills um, of what you can do to help each part of those high jump baby steps. In addition, they also talk about coaching cues to do during um, practice or during a high jump competition and videos to help with all of that as well. The link to the e-course is in the description below. All other resources referred to in this training are also in the description below.